This episode of the Gear Podcast is brought to you by Soldano and the new Astro 20. Theme song for the Gear Podcast. Ah. Uncle Leon, I've been waiting weeks to sing that to you. How are you feeling, buddy? Mate, how you been? Oh, it's <laughs> it's been a week. Long story short, I got robbed, so that's not good. You know that. Had my- We're not even talking about the West Coast Eagles losing either. We're talking about criminal uh, behavior yeah, criminal in behavior. your household. Yeah, yeah, people snuck into my house at night, took my wallet, took my partner's wallet and her, um, her keys. So that was pretty not great. But, uh, you know, they didn't take my guitars, Rubbish. mate. They were, like, they, the, the guitars were right, like, centimeters away. And my pedal board, my laptop, all that stuff survived, just the, the rest of it. So, you know what? Not a great way to start the week. But uh, we move on and uh, we just look forward to next week, mate. Next week performance against the, uh, against the Crows on Friday night. Currently, your back is to the wall, but you have you know, faith in the boys that you can trust the process and see it through. Yeah. So that's, um, that's what's news with me, mate. But, you know, I've just been kicking, ticking along. It's been a couple of weeks since we've done one of these. So apolog- apologies yeah. to all the friends and family out there that have missed Leon and I talking to each other. Um, how have you been, mate? So you're back from NZ. Back for the attack. John Dawkins style. Mm -hmm. Uh, Got back Monday. It's currently, we're recording this on a Wednesday. So yeah, got back about 48 hours ago. And what can I tell you, mate? Australia is, it's it's very bright. There's a lot of sunshine here Mm -hmm. and things aren't very green in Perth at the moment. They're the main differences. Uh, But other than that, I'm actually feeling really good. Man, I told you, I went to the zoo this morning and it was very green and beautiful there. Lovely. It's hot today though, man. What is it? Like 30 degrees or something? It feels like it's 30 Pushing degree it, day. Yeah. 34 Celsius. today. It's 34. Oof. We might not get a th- another 34 day for months, mate. So we've got to enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I'm, you could, I reckon it's going to be a year where I swim in the ocean in April. Nice. Must be nice. That's, that's, the, type of, that's the type of year. I don't it think it I, must be good for some, Troy. I didn't. I think I went to the beach once over summer in December. So that was the last time I went to the beach. But um, anyway, that's all right. Hey, Uncle Leon, I got a couple of things to ask you. One, amazing. Two, what you got there? What you're holding? Well, I have a question before you do that. And the question is, do you look at it today? <laughs> and from there, uh, yeah, look, I, I bought another guitar because that's just a thing that I do. Yep. Uh, this was a gum tree special from Queensland, mate. I was sitting in my hotel room in New Zealand, which I should backtrack and say, I took my Rubato carbon fiber Lassie, basically played everything except for two or three songs on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I broke a string during one of the shows, like, you know, the eighth gig on that set of strings. So that was understandable. Yep. But uh, through Electric Factory here in Australia who distribute PRS, they got me in touch with the PRS distro in New Zealand, which isn't the same as Australia. I had a pretty interesting chat to some people running a guitar store there about the whole distro thing in New Zealand, mm. but that might actually be worth talking to that person about on a future episode. Uh, And anyway, so they lent me a used 2021 PRS CE24. People would have seen it on my Instagram and my vlogs. So, you know, kind of like a flame top thing. Uh, And I quite liked it. Um, So I just was looking around on Gumtree in Australia for like used CE24s and this one popped up, but it's a standard. So it's all mahogany. Mm -hmm. Uh, People may remember uh, the... Oh man, PRS. I think they've made the standard on and off, but it was a custom 24 without the maple top. It was just all mahogany. Yep. Uh, and they did this in 2016. They did a limited run standard CE, but it's a satin finish. It's like the most un PRS PRS, yeah. right? Um, satin finish. It feels great. Uh, neck feels great on it. Uh, the neck's quite, it's the pattern thin, I believe. Okay. So it's a thinner. I don't want to say Ibanez-like neck, but right, Ibanez-like okay. neck. Um, Quite definitely less, yeah, definitely less chunky than the Makati or the probably not, <clears throat> probably not as thin as an Ibanez, but compared to like a Makati or the SE DGT um, eighty-five fifteen pickups, it's, it's like the frets barely look used. So it's mm. a, I think someone's bought it and just kind of hung on to it. But uh, yeah, it's an awesome guitar. I I really like these pickups, the eighty-five fifteens. They're Unlike the, because what did they have in customs? The vintage bass and the HFS. Yeah, yeah. They were okay. You know, I didn't mind those. Fine. I, I've got a set of yours that I uh, pulled out That's of. That's right. Uh, no, well, you lent them to me and I put them in my Les Paul when I first got it because the Les Paul I had That's right. didn't have a bridge pickup that worked. And then, um, yep. yeah. 
So are they the pickups that are in your single cut? No. So the single cut, my single cut's a 2008 mm -hmm. SC245. It has the 245 pickups, right. which are the covered versions of the mirror pickups. I really like oh. the mirror pickups as well. Right. So those guitars actually sound quite similar and which, you know, would surprise no one because the pickups are basically identical and uh, there is a lot of crossover mm -hmm. in the materials and construction. But yeah, so they're the 245s. They're not the 5708s, which I think a lot of people assume right. they are, which are more of a straight up PAF thing. And yeah, but this is this is like more definitely, it's just like hotter. Yeah. Uh, it's not super modern sounding or anything like that. The split sounds are really good on it. Mm -hmm. I did a video with the Axe Effects yesterday, used it for a bit. So yeah, it's the neck's really, uh, it's it's interesting because it's like a proper satin finish body, but the neck is like a, it's definitely lacquered. Ugh. It's not quite. I think it's, I, yeah. It'd be it'd be interesting if it was oiled, but it's Paul, not super you shiny. Yeah, you've dogged the boys, <laughs> but it kind of feels like satin that's been polished up. Okay, like so does your Cole it, Clark have that where your arm yeah, touches it? Yeah, yeah, my my Cole Clark is just like it, yeah. It, it look it's shiny. It's buffed from all of the intense yep. this at this action. Yep. Years of it. Oh, the, where the arm goes and then where your leg goes. Oh, yeah, yeah, both of them. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> bit of this one. That thing's, bit that of thing's this Mad one, Max, the you know? road warrior. Exactly, mate. Oh, you, just exactly. quickly, just uh, shorts today. You got shorts on? No, nah, I'm jeaned up, Oh, dude. my God. Yeah. Mate, I've got to see those sweet knees. Exactly. Next time. The, um, the sensual knees. But yeah, anyway, I've got, got, got this for a great price. Sweet. Pretty happy with it because so, I've wanted- a standard for a long time and I'm into the CE thing. I blame you, the other John Brown, yep. for, for, you know, getting me into this. And Dog and the boys. So, Uncle Leon, let's go nice back. Allowed. DGT. DGT yes. SE. Where's that? Yes. Uh, uh, CE24. Yes. I've got a CE24 that's being refretted by Tim. And then this one. And then this one. That's yeah, that's four in a year. Four. When, when so did you get the DGT? That was stuff. mid last year, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, cool. I think so. So, can you rank them? Like, oh, the DGT is the best guitar I own. Uh, so, just okay, straight straight to zero on the list. Mm -hmm. So that's the Harley Reed. Uh, that's the Harley Reed, exactly. Speaking so, of which, who's your Colby McCurchin? West Coast should have traded pick one. No, Harley Reed's sick, man. Like, I think go we... and get in the Bin Damien Barrett. Yep, yep. Sam Edmund is it Sam Edmund? <laughs> no, Sam McClure. Oh, sorry. McClure. Sam McClure. I mean, yeah. Go on. So oh. who's um, who's who's Colby McKercher? Number two. Ooh, number two, number two. Look, I'm waiting to get this CE24 back. Okay. Because Tim's doing a stainless refret on it. I think it might be, I think that might be number two. Uh, the SEDGT and this are kind of neck and neck. That, Which is good. The SEDGT is amazing, man. And that's uh, like what, $1,500 guitar versus a $4,000 guitar probably? Yeah, basically. So yeah, good on you. Good on you, Paul. You, you, hey. you got one hey. back. You dogged it's, the boys with the satin neck, <laughs> but you, <laughs> you're back. I, and look, uh, I'm going to throw this out to the audience. Do people prefer the birds or the dots? I know PRS call them moons, but they're dots. Um, you know, on a guitar like this, I would prefer the dots. Yeah, I'd probably prefer the dots as well. I don't, I don't know if I, I don't hate the birds. I don't. I think my SE. I don't get the hatred them. for them either. People are like, oh yuck. But you know, look. I think for they, me, there's a there's a gaudiness about guitars. There's 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 a level of it that I really enjoy and a level that I really yeah. don't enjoy. So for me, like rhinestones, amazing. But whenever like gold, I don't like gold. I don't like gold hardware. To me, that feels a bit right. Uh, yeah, it doesn't do it for me. And like really. Um, like flashy binding and stuff. And like, you know, you see those um, Schecter guitars um, where they've just, they look really like OTT with some of the, like some of the features. Like, oh, it's like, you know- You know okay, when you're in high school- Yeah, go on. And there were those shops aimed at teenage girls that sold them that like crap jewelry. Yeah. And they're still there. They're in like every shopping mall. That's the vibe I get from those Schecters. Yeah. And it's like even the Cole Clarks, like the acoustics, the Fat Lady 2 and the Fat Lady 3, they're both great guitars, but the, the Fat Lady 3- just like it just has too much going on, you know. Like it's not necessary. Just like give me a it's guitar. It's Botox. Like you know, yeah, it's Botox. It's Botox. Which it's hey, a bit like nothing hey, wrong with that. If, if you want to do that to your face, yeah, mate. You and I, we get touched up every now and again. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. You gotta you gotta get the Botox, you know, in the balls What's so that they look nice and big. 
<laughs> nice and smooth. That's uh, <laughs> nice and smooth. <laughs> That's yeah. a Dave Chappelle. Someone thing, was right? te- someone was telling me that theirs isn't smooth, and I was like, "What's what's your problem, bro?" Uh, nice man. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, I think that's let's let's get on to topic because well I actually you what know, have you got what have you got that's new oh uh, well you know because there's always things you know what I'll show you, you know, I'll show you one thing yeah. I, I sort of mentioned I would love to see oh I can lift it up for you mate hey, just two seconds and this is why people should watch the video podcast on YouTube here you go hit like and subscribe oh look at that that's yeah. a I've got that's a cute little thing um so I have what do you got mounted in them. Uh, well, I bought them off. I bought them off um, Facebook a few days ago. I've been uh, communicating with a guy for a few weeks, but I just haven't. He's like south, and I haven't had the time to go. But um, yeah, they're two one by twelves. One's a closed back, one's an open back. They're sort of like DIY jobs. I think his mate put the cabs together. They look like pine. Um, they're not like fancy construction, but they they're fine. They seem re- reasonably solid. Um, but one has a. They're both eight ohm cabs. One's got a. Um, uh, H30 70th anniversary in it. Oh, nice. One has a warehouse retro 30 in it. So, oh, yeah. Um, so I'm keen to know your thoughts on the uh, the warehouse. Yeah. Well, I had a uh, uh, veteran 30 years ago. I don't really use it very much. So, right. and you know, the the other JB, Todd, as we uh, as we like to talk about Todged. it, and we've mentioned this a second time to talk about him today. So, go watch John's Wait. videos on YouTube because he is the bomb. Yeah. Um, Oh, and also slight sideways shout out to um, Headfirst and Monomyth, uh, Jason and Shay for that club oh, yeah, secret because really that amp cool. sounded fucking awesome. And I was this close. Yeah. Had some people paid an invoice. I, I may have hit Jason up about the the ones in Australia, but I really like those amps. Anyway, we got plenty of other friends of the family to say good day to. But uh, with these cabs uh, and the Retro 30, John Brown did a video about the uh, Retro 30 maybe six months ago or less. Yep. And it, I definitely preferred the Veteran 30. For the price I got this cab for, I thought it was worth rolling the dice again. And yeah. I plugged it in yesterday and I actually really like the way it sounds. So that's pretty cool. And I've been, uh, I was playing it with the IRX into the orange power amp as well, the orange pedal baby. Yeah, tell Which me is, how you were digging that. You know what? The orange is a funny one, man. I don't, I, I, when I first tried it, when it first arrived and I first had a chance to give it a shot, I didn't really dig it. But it's a very convenient form factor of a power amp to, to use because it's reasonably yeah. light, reasonably small. It's a class AB power amp. Um, so, yeah, it has this plasticiness to it. And I didn't really enjoy that. And that was running the running it through the, like, a, uh, I think I was actually running it through an orange cab at the time, orange 2x12. And I was using the SYN 1 into the front of it with, like, the deliverance module. And maybe I swapped modules. I can't remember. But yeah, I, I just didn't really get a vibe out of it that I was that into. Interesting. But I was playing playing it again yesterday. I think volume really, like there's a point when it does kind of sound a little bit better. It may be yeah, imagination. It's, I, I can't really tell. But with the IRX, um, yeah, I, got a, I actually got a sound out of it that I really liked. And the IRX, the more I've used it, the more I've liked it as well. Yeah, and I did a session about two or three weeks ago where I, that was the um, we just used that for the the guide guitar sounds. Oh, cool! And that the uh, guy was playing a Les Paul, and like he was like he couldn't believe how good it sounded. Um, and you know the form factor and stuff, it was it was pretty pretty wicked, man. So I really liked it running it into the Synergy power amp and a cab. That hmm. was pretty awesome. You know, that's if you could, you know, yeah, you could easily run that a one by 12 and ha- like have it all on a pedal board. And yeah. that would be a great rig. Well, I um, think I'm going to take the IRX to the stadium on Friday night for the next Dockers game. I've, I've already hit oh, them to yeah. it. The only thing is it doesn't have effects on it, obviously. It's just, um, yeah. you know, so I've already hit them to the fact that I might need them to put a bit of delay and reverb on it, which I'm sure. Yeah. I'm not sure that's just a bit of sauce. A bit of sauce. Um, so that's really cool. But yeah, I got those, um, got those cabinets, the, the G12. So the, the two cabs, they look the same, but one's open back. The open back one's got the the G twelve H seventieth anniversary in it, which they they're very different sounding cabs. Uh, uh, like in general, I'm not sure if that's because of the open back or not, but um, the certainly for cleaner stuff, I prefer the open back. The yep. retro, the sorry, the retro is a little bit brighter and more direct sounding. Had a bit more chugga chugga to it. So you know, I'm not. I mostly bought the cabs for the speakers, not for the to have the cabs themselves. So 
We'll see. Um, we'll see what it kind of ends up happening with them. I might move the speakers into like a 212 or something. Have you seen J- Todgeber's latest <laughs> uh, video with the... Say it, uh, say it, say it. The other John Brown, the other John Brown. No, no, not the that. Other say the speaker. John Brown. Say the speaker, Brown. Ah, the Fane, produced by F- Fane, but it's Hiklam Audio. That's that's um, what I want you to say, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Daniel's a rad dude. Daniel's a rad dude. I've demoed a bunch of his pedals and, yeah, I'm... I really want to try one of these speakers, mm. and I'd love to get Daniel on the show as well. Yeah, uh, is that yeah super dirt pedal he had super was rad, sick, man. The um, what, what was the I, I borrowed it for a little bit. The um, what was it called? The anyway, the cool graphics on it, but it had like two two buttons on it. It was a distortion pedal. I thought that sounded really great. Um, the Gehenna, maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit fuzzy on that. Uh, by the way, the other John Brown has made IRs of the uh, the. Clam speaker in there, uh, which are available for free. You go to their website. It's awesome. Have you seen the amp they're making as well? I, I saw a picture of it, but I didn't go any further. Yeah. So, yeah. The Prometheus. It looks pretty rad. Yeah. Um, so, uh, again, hopefully I'll get to try one at some point. I have spoken to Dan about it. But sweet. I think they're just doing the custom orders and things like that at the moment. So, yeah. it's pretty inspiring to see someone go, you know, he's like some of the pedals he makes are... Fantastic, great artwork, great prices, some original designs, and then getting into the amp and, and speaker thing, yep. which I think is pretty amazing. So, yeah, more more power to Daniel. That's awesome. Yep. Anyway, John's video is good. Yeah, Good well, sounding speaker. This uh, re- Retro 30 is cool so far. I'd like to maybe get a... If I could find a Veteran 30 for a, a, a reasonable price and B, <laughs> yeah. just something locally, then I'd probably grab it. Um, I'd like to try... Um, I'd like to hear it in this Marshall 212 that I have, like the uh, whatever the studio classic or vintage or whatever cab yep. that I've got. That'd be kind of cool. But aside from that, well, two two things. The second will lead into something that we'll talk about in a little bit greater detail. But I have a uh, another new mic. This is probably the fifth different mic I've used for these podcasts. This is a Mojave. Look at that. I like the I like the stand. Yeah, I, f- I found one on uh, Gumtree, like around the corner for like 50 bucks. So I picked it up the other day. And on this awesome. new Ikea desk, I can put the stand in a place that's convenient. So, you know, ah, isn't it good? It's so much better. So anyway, I got this. Um, my friend Peter, who has a studio next to mine, um, has this Mojave uh, 201 FET, MA201 FET condenser mic. So I just thought, oh, let's try that for something a little bit different. Because I've been doing a few sessions recently where I need to do a little bit of these ones. Ah, yeah. Or a little bit of tambourine or a little bit of acoustic or some claps. So it's actually convenient to have a mic that I can pull over and record with that isn't... I was just using an M88 before for for this stuff. So that's kind of convenient. So that's been nice. And then, um, mate, let me tell you a little story. Tell me a little story. A couple of weeks ago, I... uh, I went to Optus Stadium here in Perth, Western Australia, and I played on top of Optus Stadium. I think we all know that by now. Not not t- trying to toot my own horn, just a fact of life. Mate, and, toot your uh, own horn. I played, it's a great thing. <laughs> I played my uh, new-to-me Explorer for the first time. Got to use that for the gig, which is awesome because um, I bought the guitar pretty much to, to use at this, at this gig. Yep. And it looked amazing, and I had more comments about the guitar... Uh, over the preceding like 24 hours and I have probably any other guitar I've played there. So that was great. Big tick. Gibson Australia, are you listening to Troy? Yeah, give me a purple one, Gibson Australia. So anyway, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, what I what I used for the game was my AX8, AX8 as I've used for the last few years with my JCM800 modified patch that I did in there according to some video that you did years ago about like settings you can tweak. And I got it like, I'm really happy with this tone. It's one of my favorite tones to play ever. I just love it. And nice. it works with every guitar. So pre-game, uh, like I, I hadn't plugged the Explorer into the AX8 until I was on top of the stadium and listening to stuff in the in-ears. And boy, is the output on that guitar intense. <laughs> um, really? Yeah. And I've sort of clocked that I didn't love the way it sounded through some, some of the other amps. Like it's just... Um, I don't know. It's uh, it might be a silly way of describing it, but it's like it's a little, a little slow. Whereas, like, I get more immediacy from. It might be the because it's a mahogany body, or it might be because of the shape. I don't know. Yeah, but interesting. 
it just felt like it didn't give me the like real tight immediacy that I was hoping for, like a little darker sounding, but still quite hot. So like, you know, a friend of the channel, Michael Torin, yeah. um, yep. sent that um, JJ Dirt preamp, which mm -hmm. I'm looking at this over there. And I loved the way that sounded in the, in the Synergy rig. Uh, but there, uh, when I was using the Chavel, but with this one, I didn't quite like it as much. With the Les Paul, it sounds great. With the Explorer, I don't like it as much. So anyway, the common denominator is the Explorer. So it just got me yeah, thinking yeah. about replacing the pickups in it because, and particularly <sighs> after I'd done the gig, I, I managed to tweak the thing. Like it's not the end of the world. I got a sound that I was happy with, just turn the gain down a little bit, readjust some EQ controls and it was all fine. Um, but that's the only time I've used one of these guitars into that AX8 and I haven't really been super into the tone the first mm -hmm. time. And it was really saturated, like in a not super duper pleasant sort of a way. So I thought, let's just change the pickups. And um, and I knew that uh, I was thinking about like, what am I going to put in this thing? And I'm like, I have a Duncan Custom somewhere in my house. So I'll chuck that in there. No worries. Cannot find it anywhere. It has disappeared <laughs> completely. But I managed to find another one. After a few days of looking around, I found one in Melbourne that's being sent over at the moment. So I've got that to oh, put nice. in there. And then I also bought a, oh, this this guy right here, which is a Duncan Jazz. Nice. The best, basically the best neck pickup ever. I right. have never, ever used a Duncan Jazz in a guitar before, Leon. Or at least Troy. To, to my knowledge. So do you want to talk it's about- It's a great pickup. I think the Jazz is way better than the JB. The JB is a classic pickup, but it's a bit like- I don't know. I don't know how to... Are, are people just over the JB? Look, but the I'm, jazz in the neck is... It works every time. <clears throat> I've got it in my Custom 24 mm -hmm. and my, funnily enough, Troy, in my Hamer Standard. Oh, and there you go. That's got to be one of the best sounding neck humbuckers in that guitar. It's just... It's just great. It's such a shame it's called the jazz. I know. I can't... I almost can't bring myself to do it. So the thing is, like, I've... I guess, like, over the years, when I was... Um, you know, all I wanted to do was be Paul Gilbert um, yes. and play 80 Shred music. Uh, Damasio was the only pickup manufacturer that that existed as far as I was aware. Yep. Um, I actually did have a JB that I bought and put in a um, an RG550, I think it was, or 570. I just didn't, didn't really like it that much at the time. But um, yeah, man, like Damasio was kind of the thing. And then just over the last couple of years, I've been getting a bit more into a Duncan sort of thing. Like if I do want to find pickups for a guitar, I tend to lean towards that. And I've, yeah. I've been through, I think like pickups for me are too difficult to change. They're not that difficult. Like I can operate a soldering no. iron and I love soldering yeah. cables, but I just cannot be fucked. Of all the things to do with a soldering iron, soldering pickups yeah. is my least favorite one. And you uh, know what it comes down to is that the first time I tried to do it in a guitar was an absolute disaster. Like I burnt yeah. the guitar because I dropped the soldering iron in there and it was just, um, it was not pleasant. So I've got that in my brain as something that I never wanted to The touch. first time, mate, I've never not done that with a guitar. <laughs> well, it's just like, you know, they're not hard to change. Like if you've got enough time and you've just set your soldering yeah. up and you get a bloody soldering iron stand, which I probably didn't have at the time. I, I seem to remember yes. leaning it against yes. a plate or something. So yep, that's something that changed my life as well. Yeah. That is good advice, kids. So listen to Unky Troy. Yeah, listen to Uncle Troy. So anyway, I've had a lot of different varieties of things. Like I've got some bare knuckle pickups in my um in my Les Paul. That um, sounds really good. I've had some lace sensor pickups in various strats and whatnot. But um I see I kind of have this thing at the moment where it's like if I'm gonna put pickups in a guitar, I'm just probably gonna start with some Duncans because they just seem like this is an imagine. I'm sure this is an imagined thing. It's just like a very good, like neutral middle of the road place to start with aftermarket yeah. pickups. Um, does that sound fair to you? Well, before we go on to that, actually, yes, I agree. I think they're kind of like you want a rock guitar sound. You plug into a Marshall, mm -hmm. and then you figure out if you you want a metal guitar sound. You plug into a fifty one fifty, and then you figure out if that's what you want or not. Mm -hmm. uh, you want a clean sound. You plug into like a Fender Deluxe. You figure out if that's the vibe. And look, it will either work immediately. Well done. You can you can get on with your life, or it won't, and you need to explore some alternatives. So yeah, the Duncan stuff. I look. Here's the thing. What would you recommend to say a fifteen year old kid is like? I want to change the pickups in my guitar. Let's say it's a Les Paul style guitar. Mm -hmm. What Seymour Duncan should I put in? What would your recommendation be for neck and bridge? 
Well, it kind of feels like like a custom 59 like set would probably not be too bad of an idea. Um, yep. It feels like a jazz JB set. Like they seem to be the two like areas that you go down with Duncan's, right? Like yeah. there's more pickups, there's way more pickups than that. But that accounts to for me, SH1 to JB, five, right? Anyway, yeah. To me, the jazz to JB is like almost too stock. Right. You know, you're so used to that sound. And I might imagine that it's because so many like OEM pickups are kind of voiced to be like them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The jazz in the neck is awesome. Like I'm... I'm I'm there. I don't think you really need to overthink it too much. Uh, yeah, and then custom custom five, you know. I haven't custom, tried custom custom. I haven't tried the custom five and the custom customs and stuff. They haven't been readily. You available. have tried a custom five because I have one in my blue custom twenty four. Oh, okay. Well, um, that's that's the bridge pickup. That's a that's a great pickup. Yeah, I definitely enjoy that one. But yeah, so all like the fifty nine custom, as you said, I think that's a really good well, combo. So here's the thing: like you know, you you say that they sound really stock, and I kind of agree with you, but I think that's what makes them so powerful. Because yeah. it's like, you know, I was talking about- your pickups don't sound like that, maybe you want to get them closer to that. So just well, use there's one of these. Sh- there's just so many variables in a guitar. You know, if it's the pick or the strings, that like without going through the whole list, but it's like everything you can change, it will have a slight difference. So the yeah. pickups to me are the thing that like, as I said, they're like the hardest, the most, they're not hard, probably the mo- most frustrating to uh, to change in, for me. And, I, yeah. and it takes the longest. I can't just be like- well, I don't like the way this sounds. Just let me take the guitar for 15 minutes and go take all the strings off us and put uh, new pickups in and yes. play it again and see what it sounds like. So, you know, they're not as easy to uh, to swap out if you want to manipulate your tone, whereas you can do that with yeah. a pedal or you can do that with a set of strings or a pick or something like that or just change guitars, you know. Exactly. So exactly. I th- like us. Yeah. So I feel like like the the JB Jazz or something in that vicinity is like such a powerful starting point and as a like foundation for just setting a tone, like that's probably pretty good. Like the bare knuckles are great. I've got the, which ones have I got? The cold sweats in my Les Paul. Cold sweats, yeah. Which sound really great. I love the way that guitar sounds. I had a black dog in that Les, a bare knuckle black dog in that guitar before the um, these ones. And that sounded That's really right. good. It was much lower output. This episode of the Gear Podcast is brought to you by Soldano and the new Astro 20. The Astro 20 is a three channel, four galaxy, assembled in USA head that combines authentic all-tube tone with features ideal for today's modern guitarist. Mike Soldano designed the Sonic Powerhouse to be a fully featured, versatile 20-watt amplifier. The Astro 20 can also be used as a standalone cabless amplifier, ideal for live sound, rehearsal and studio recording sessions, thanks to the DSP-powered IR cabinet simulation. Let's hear it. The simple front panel design of the Astro 20 lets you save any combination of the channels, galaxies and IRs and quickly recall them with the included four button MIDI foot switch. To learn more, check out soldano.com or chat to your local dealer so you can try one now. Thanks again to Soldano for sponsoring this episode of the Gear Podcast. Let's get back to it. Do you want something markedly different from what you've got? Because I think really, if you want to change your pickups, then you probably want to go from one extreme to the other. Like your guitar's way too hot mm-hmm. or way too dark and saturated and maybe you want something a bit more open and chimey instead, like you prefer those things, yeah. then that's a great excuse to do it. But going like, yeah, I've got like the bare knuckle, you know, Omega Sweat um, Powerade version, but I think I want the Powerade <laughs> 2C. You know what I mean? Where it's yeah. like, it's subtly different. It's like, just twist some knobs in your rig, bro. Like you can probably... Yeah, get around that issue but you know obviously like you know a pickup's basically a second order filter right um Mm. has a little resonant peak cut some high end out relatively flat ish kind of thing um so changing where that resonant peak is is really important Mm -hmm. that's going to massively change the tone and then obviously the amount of output is another thing in there Mm -hmm. um I would highly recommend there's a company called Psychfi, so C-Y-C-F-I. They do the little pickup modules and I've got one of their new six pickups in a guitar. So you can do the like, you know, multi-string oh, output yeah. thing. But they have a whole section on their blog talking about like the frequency response of different pickups and how if you've got a really flat pickup, 
you can just use an EQ to kind of simulate some of the response. Right. So um, yeah, you know, like a Strat single coil or a PAF style humbucker have a very, very different kind of frequency response. Um, and then something like an EMG is like really, really flat, which mm -hmm. is sometimes why people are like that because they're like, oh, it's so much brighter and there's more output. Um, yeah. But, you know, you plug it into an amp and you immediately begin filtering stuff out. So, <laughs> yeah. So there's that aspect to it as well. Um, but anyway, to come back around, the Duncan thing, it seems to be the acceptable stock choice. They're the boss of pickups, right? Yeah. And I think I'm you know? a, I'm a, I'm a boss type of a man too. I like a I like a boss guitar pedal. I like a a um, Marshall amp. Um, you like I a like boss a, man coffee. I like an Ernie Ball set of strings and a Diodario yep. set of strings, and yep. everything's good. You know, like there's no not don't mean to disrespect anybody that makes pickups or anything like that. I just think like for the way that I like to set my gear, I want to just take maybe the pickup side of it out of the equation a little bit. Just give yes. me something that's reasonably like. That is acceptably going to be good and work in a lot of different applications, yeah. and then I can manipulate it from there. And like, obviously, it's different if you're doing like, you know, really tight metal stuff, and you need that like output, or you need active pickups yep. or something like that. Maybe that's a different story. But for just doing the stuff that I do, um, yeah, something that that's reasonably accepted. So, anyway. and if you're doing like a roots thing or a blues thing, then like, yeah. P90s maybe instead of humbuckers yeah. are going to be more the vibe. You know. Um, there's there's definitely it's it's probably going to be specific largely specific to the sort of genre yeah. space you're in you know um like this guitar the 8515s i wouldn't do a blues gig with them you know or like a anything lower gain because they, they they just have they've got a little bit more of that kind of like cocked wah thing that yeah. higher output pickups have but, but you, as soon as i run it through some gain it's the greatest thing ever but you probably also just pick a different guitar for that too it's like not, yeah, not exactly. specifically the pickups. It's like the whole, the instrument as the a whole. The system. Yeah, the system yeah. of it is, is important to to, uh, to consider. I mean, yeah, so to bring it back around to this Explorer, like I think that's something, I want the system to work in, yeah. in the situation it's intended. And I, I feel, I don't, I'm not quite sure what pickups are in there. It's like until I take them out and look at them, I won't be able to know. And I'm waiting for this, um, this custom to arrive um, because I didn't just want to like put the, yeah. oh, Jesus like throw my stuff around over here i don't want to just put the one thing in and restring it again so hopefully that arrives today and i'll be able to put, pop the thing in for tomorrow for a game on friday night yeah great um, but i've got the i've got a custom and 59 in my uh set in my uh se my prs se yeah and i great love guitar. love the way the custom sounds love the way the custom sounds and don't really care for the 59 that much and one Troy, of them you might have to jazz well, this is the thing, man. Like the reason I don't like it, it's a bit too like tubby and like big in the bottom end. And that's nice for certain things, but mostly like I just want to have a bit more clarity and I don't really yep. get the same sort of like, I don't know. It, it just, it's like, it's slow. There's probably another way of saying it. I'm not sure if it, cause it's got so much bottom, more bottom than what I'm expecting. Um, cause like for me, when I, pl I, I'm, if I'm playing rock stuff, I'm on a bridge, like bridge humbucker is like yeah. my favorite position. If I'm playing, um, anything with less gain cleaner, it's usually like the neck position, but with a single coil, uh, either telly or it's, you know, strat, um, or position two there on a strap with the middle and, and neck. So yeah, I'm used to that sound. And like one of my tellies, when I go to the neck, it is, it is like a lot beefier sounding, um, the, my Jason Isbell telly has a lot more balance between the two pickups, which I really like. It's not, doesn't like tub up too much. And I'm, and I, I didn't realize with the jazz and, and this is just me not looking at like the specs of it and just reading the name. Cause to me, what jazz implies is maybe something that's like very low output and maybe has a lot more bottom end and stuff in it. Yeah. But I, I'm, I think with output, it's, it's medium output, right? It's not like low yeah. output. But it's also the sound of the jazz to me is like it. It just does sound a bit clearer and cleaner. Yeah, but it and doesn't that's have my like impression of it. It's not an overly emphasized bottom end, right? It's like it's pretty. No, if anything, no. it like ro not rolls off. But I think I saw one graph that seemed like it had a bit less. It's like, well, that's like exactly what I've been looking for 
in a fucking like neck position yeah. of a, a Les Paul for years. You know, I think that's that's probably just the type of thing I need. So that's, that's probably why it's designed. The other thing as well, we've I've mentioned frequency response of the pickups a little bit, but you were just talking about like you know the pickups being slow, so the transient response at mm -hmm. like first thirty to fifty milliseconds. That's something I don't see talked about a lot, but it's really important. Mm -hmm. Like, in fact, oh, I was just doing a quick little Google. So there is a paper here from Transactions on Magnetics, and it says the simple RLC circuit models of guitar pickups do not account for audible features that characterize the pickup. Psychoacoustic experiments reveal that any acoustically accurate model has to reproduce the first 30 milliseconds of the transient response with extreme precision. Right. So that might, if that's an important thing in the model, maybe that's a really important thing with, if you think about the aspects of like wire gauge, the winding pattern, the magnet and the design of the pickup, people can harp on about frequency response all day, but if there's a dynamic element to it mm -hmm. uh, and the transient response is different, that's gonna be super important. Again, if, like you said earlier, if you're playing like tight metal stuff, yeah then maybe that's why like a PAF ain't the best choice in there. You need a much, maybe you want a faster transient in there to help with a pick attack. And um, yeah, that's something I'd actually, that never floated into my conscious before, but that's probably a massive element. It's probably something that people aren't really discussing that much. Maybe it doesn't Again, exist and I'm full of shit. That's also a possibility. Yeah, maybe we're just full of shit as well. Maybe it, all that matters is a frequency response. Um, Because I was going to ask you, like, have you tried lowering the pickup heights <laughs> before changing the pickups? Nah. Nah, I just wanted to spend some money. Yeah, okay. That's uh, that's a totally good justification. No, and I know everybody listening to this feels that. No, nah, it's... um The pickup height isn't too... Uh, it's pretty moderate at the moment. It's not, like, too high or too low. So it's pretty much what I'd expect. I, I should have tried that. But yeah, I think just the, the general tone of it too is a little darker than what I wanted. So yeah, I don't know. Just It kind of wasn't really cutting the mustard. I mean, the other thing about it that I didn't try is I, I think we I went on about it a little while ago, how I changed the pots in my Les Paul and like putting yep. 500K pots in there made a significant difference over the 300s that were there. So I yep. don't know what pots are in this guitar. Maybe if I change the pickups and still don't like yeah. it, maybe that's worth a try. Again, um, the whole system of electronics in there is important. Um, changing pots is definitely, definitely a big thing. Um, I've done that on my McCarty had a one mega ohm pot for a while. That's right. And that was kind of cool. It was a little bit brighter and I went back to a 500. Yeah. Because 500 is stock and five, did I go 500 or 250? I can't remember, but you know, people will harp on about, oh, you know, the 59 bursts, like they had 340K ohm pots and the good ones did anyway, but there would have been so much variation there. Yeah, I think like I'm, I'm feel lucky because I have the enough skill to be able to do this stuff myself, and to I have just, enough money. It's to, not difficult. Yeah, and I have like you know enough money to where it's like if I'm going to change pots, it's going to cost me like twenty to fifty dollars to do that. Like, well, that's yeah. okay. I'm sure I can cover that. And a hundred dollars, like this was a hundred bucks. The other pickup was about a hundred bucks too. Like, there's not a huge. Do you also pick up grays? Like, if you see one for a good price that you don't necessarily want, you're like, hey, sixty bucks for a Seymour Duncan pickup. I may as well just grab it. You know what? I used to do that, and I've stopped. And the reason is that um, I uh, I benefited a lot from that when I was like in my early twenties, just like grabbing cheap stuff, and I really wanted to yeah. try stuff. And then um, you end up hoarding stuff that you never use. And there's probably other 20-year-olds out there that really want to hear this stuff. So I've tried to be a bit more like yeah. balanced. And, you know, that that's not with everything, but with, with certain things, like if I if I, if I I see a good deal and I'm like, oh, let's, people give stuff away for free sometimes. I'm like, yeah. I don't need another free base. Like, what's this going to do for me? It's, it'll sit in the corner and never get used. Yep. Like I've had that with... Um, like when I used to try and do more art projects with the guitars, like decoupage something or put rhinestones on it, I was yep. a little bit more interested. But these days, I don't really care so much. So yeah, let them let other people have it, man. Like um, I just really am more interested in the stuff that I want to try out. And um, there's like these cabs, probably like the speakers will stay because I think I'll find purposes for the speakers, but the cabinets themselves, I may not need so i might just flip yep. the the cabinets themselves for like like 20 bucks or something like that yeah because someone will have use for that because like i got really pissed exactly. off with a guy that um and i shouldn't because like i've i've done sort of this before like a long time ago 
but you know, I sold him, I sold an uh, unloaded one by 12 cab for $50. Because again, I bought the cab and with a speaker in it. I wanted the speaker. I didn't want the cabinet. I paid like $200 for the, the thing. Took the speaker out, sell the cab for 50 bucks. It's like, it's not really exploiting anybody or anything. Just yeah. like have the thing I want. Um, and then I sold the same guy some speakers that I, I bought like two Fender speakers or like uh, Jensen yeah, speakers that's out of right. Fender for like 50 bucks. I'm like, well... This guy was generous enough to give me these speakers really cheap. I'm not using them. Yeah. I'll sell them 50 bucks. So anyway, same guy bought both these things. And then all of a sudden, like the next day, he's put like a one by 12 up for sale for $300. I'm like, come on, man. Like <laughs> like a day later, like you're not... Yeah, like everyone flips stuff and I shouldn't be too shitty about yeah. it. Yeah, like it's, it's okay. But you know, have some, have some tact, Just bro. Just give it um, at least a week. Try it out first. So like, you know if it sounds any good. Just don't be that guy like flipping stuff. Um. So anyway, that that was a bit of a that was a bit of a bummer. But again, I'm probably overreacting to nothing. To be to be completely. It's honest. like that rectifier recording preamp that came up for like oh. eight hundred bucks or nine hundred bucks. Then the next day, it was on Gumtree for fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, it's like I see what you did there, and you know, good on you. <laughs> but also, we all know. Yeah, you know. Well, um, look, I feel I feel reasonably confident at the moment. The stuff that I have. Um, Get, I mean, even though there's a lot of it, I use most of it. I use a lot of it. Yeah. And the things that I don't use don't have great value to someone. So I don't yeah. feel bad about like, because I, man, you know, we were talking about that Joe Bonamassa thing that came out the other day. Yeah. And um, like, great Joe that you've got all this stuff. But for me, I, I kind of feel like instruments and amps and whatever, they should be used to make music, not just to be like kept in a shelf. And like, he obviously does play a lot of them. But yeah. you've got, there's not enough hours in your entire life to get the benefit of having that much stuff. Like when you've got three of the same guitar, it's like, come on, man. Just like someone can make music with that thing and they probably should make music with that thing and not just like have it for the sake of it. Well, there's a section where he was saying how, you know, every day he checks his DMs on Instagram, mm. uh, which is a brave thing when you've got that much <laughs> of a public profile. But he said there's always people sending photos of guitars like, oh, hey, I've got this thing. You know, here's the story. Do you want to talk about you buying it? Uh, and he's like, yeah, you know, a lot of the time I will. But also, you know, he's like, because I've got so much stuff, people will want to sell me, you know, a 50s Gibson or something like that. And he's like, yeah, it'll be in okay condition and it's not necessarily the spec anyone wants, but I've already got like the desirable ones. So, you know, I kind of just haggle and it's like no i don't want to pay 30 grand for that it's not worth that to me yeah um you know i'll give you this much but you can probably turn around and sell it through a dealer for 45 so you know let's not waste each other's time yeah um it was it was interesting hearing him talk about what everything cost mm. uh because and like you know good on him as well because i think people <laughs> kind of it's good information to have out there what he's not a dealer He's basically a private collector, but he also then plays a lot of the stuff, you know, like he was touring with a 59 burst mm -hmm. for a long time and probably still does. So, you know, good on you, as you said, you know, they're, they're instruments, they should be played and there is the historical element, but there is always, the thing for me is, you know, the mythologizing of stuff where, yeah, Americans are really interested in these American made things from the fifties because that's when America was the most America America has ever been, <laughs> you know, like it is that there's that level of like, Oh, but, and fair enough. Like, you know, the bursts are really important guitars. No one really cared at the time. It wasn't until a bunch of British kids in the sixties were playing them. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the irony there. And the craftsmanship is great. And, you know, I get it. I, I do get it, but there's a lot of other things that have happened in the world of musical instruments since then and that continue to happen but it's just such a uh yeah it's a it's a very aesthetic thing that they're into and you know he's got the first black strat ever made mm -hmm. uh and you know they're sort of talking about how it's like nine and a half ten pounds and you know layers of different paint and that it's yeah maybe not the best strat ever mm -hmm. unlike some of the other ones so yeah it's i've i oh, look i enjoyed it and as well you know a lot of the stuff you see with Joe, he kind of comes off as not naive, but very boyish. Mm -hmm. And he was definitely not boyish in this. He was just like having a hang, just being a fucking dude. Yep. Um, Hanging with the know. boys. 
He was hanging with the boys, you yeah. know. Um, that was I kind of it was sort of humanizing, uh, especially when you're just used to music radar has the headline that Joe Bonamassa says pedals are stupid. Mm. He's very good. He's 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 very good at stoking up social media. I'm sure he finds it hilarious as well. Yep. Look, to be to be fair, he's a guy that would love The Simpsons. And so we, yeah. we'd have a fat hang with him. Like, do you know exactly. what would be sick is like Joe Bonamassa comes to Perth. We hang out with him and don't talk about anything music related. Like, I mean, when do you ever want to talk about music related with anyone really? Like there's like you and I, when we do see each other in person is like, you know, mostly because my kids are running around, but we do like probably 20 minutes of talking about guitar gear among like just talking about footy and talking about barbecue and all the other stuff. Like, yeah, it's, it's sick. The three of the five hobbies that you're allowed to have as a man in your thirties. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. So hey, a slightly slight tangent and well, not really because we're talking about pickups. I got some pickups given to me by a friend of the podcast, Warren Mendoza, because mm -hmm. I hung out with oh, Warren right, in New yeah. Zealand, which was rad. And he cooked me one of the best curries I've ever had in my life. And now I'm addicted to roti bread as well. So thanks, oh, Warren. Great. And oh, oh, just the frozen ones you get from the shop, bro. It's so good. His tip was rice bran oil on them as well, which okay. adds, adds quite a delicious flavor to them but a little that was tidbit awesome for you, is it a little tidbit little 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 tidbit uh, a rick boog's tidbit to improve your posture towards life uh <laughs> yeah so uh mr glenn's pickups in new zealand uh he gave me some of those i'm yet to put them in a guitar i'm pretty excited to try them what are they and like singles or humbuckers humbuckers covered humbuckers yeah so i'm, I'm not sure what the warren just had them made and was like yeah hey you should you should have these which was incredibly generous. He also gave me a Maxon SD9. Legend. Which he was showing me how to use the SD9 for the Landau thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah, man, this really makes me want to buy one. He's like, oh, I've got three. Just take it. It probably <laughs> needs a little bit of TLC. So um, I'm looking, I've been playing with that a bit. It's very good. Nevertheless, I went and hung out with Glenn in, so sort of the, I think it's the Northwest Beach. Uh, it's called Murawai Beach, Volcanic Beach. Amazing. Came and picked me up. Elspeth and I went out there, had like a fat hang. Didn't really talk that much about music or anything, but just hung out in the workshop a little bit. And man, he had some awesome stuff, like an Epiphone V that he'd put some of his own pickups in. Um, yeah, that was, and he'd stripped down. That was awesome. He had a few PRS SEs that he'd like taken all the paint off and put a few pickups in. And he had the whole pickup winding set in there and a 3D printer. Mm. Um yeah, and he's like he's got a young daughter who's got a workbench down there. So, you know, they he lets her get in there and like, you know, toys that have little motors or things in them, like pull them out and modify them. It was that's cool. Really cool. We should buy yeah, let's it buy like a three D printer. You wanna buy a three D printer? I know I've asked that. And Elspeth has Elspeth has been talking about getting one, so I feel like I should just get one and do we'll do, it. do fun things with it. We'll do it. We'll get one for the, the podcast. Yeah. For, for there the Christmas you go. party. 3D print hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I watched that um, slight, uh, I'll keep it mostly on track, but uh, was it Sama 66 or 66 Samus? Is that the dude? Yep. He got, he's got that Lego snare that someone sent him. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. It sounds, it, it's it's not terrible. It sounds fine. It sounds like a <laughs> snare drum mostly. Um, so that was cool. So yeah, we'll 3D print some um, some guitars. Some snares, some hot dogs. Yeah, it'll be it'll be all part of the fun. So yeah, I mean, on, uh, back on topic of the pickups. So, um, oh sorry, what, what I, I cut you off? What were you gonna say? Yeah, we had a great hang. It was re really really nice. I'll put some video up when I he's sending me some pickups to try. He was sort of like, well, what do you like? You know, because he was like, I, I wound those pickups for Warren. He kind kind of digs it. He's like, I'll, what's more your vibe? So I'm pretty keen to try out his sort of like you know rockier brown sound so well pickups. what did you tell him and well like when you when he asked like what what would you basically nothing i was like you know what i like to do right and he was like yeah and i was like what should i get so uh i'll pull up the website and describe but anyway we have to get him on the pod because super interesting dude mm -hmm. and he said the best thing as well because i was like oh do you know this person he's like yeah i know him he's a great dude uh, do you know this person yeah i know him he's a great dude like basically He's like, New Zealand's so small that everyone ends up working with one another or knowing one another. Mm -hmm. So you can't be a dickhead. Like you literally can't afford to do it. You've got to be like a good dude. Mm -hmm. So 
I thought that was pretty interesting. He was, yeah, he had a pretty interesting story about doing something for Neil Finn as well and was like, yeah, mm. legend. Uh, so I'm pretty sure the, so he does filter trons, he does mini humbuckers, he's got humbucker size P90s, um, sort of humbuckers that are voiced like single coils. Uh, he does a signature pickup for the guitar player from Alien Weaponry, which is cool mm. as well. I really like that band. Um, they're like a doom soul humbucker. Uh, there's the attitude. Uh, I think it might have been the Cloud Nine, which is mm. just this sort of like all round rock and metal pickup. So, and then he does the Integrity, which is more the PAF, mm. like you know Al Nico Two magnet sort of thing. That's the other thing with pickups, right? The type of magnets and mm. degaussing them and <clears throat> yeah, using different. Thing, it's a whole thing. It's a whole uh, thing. We that, should get. Yeah, I just don't. Yeah, I haven't gone down the rabbit hole of that. It's just, I, I think I came to the conclusion of like, if I do this, it will take too much time to get nerdy about and I don't want to yeah. spend that time doing that, uh, burning more of my guitars to a cinder. So I'll just get a uh, jazz, well, we'll see, jazz custom set and we'll see if that's the the ticket for me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I'm I'm going to try these. I got to figure out what guitar to put these pickups in as yeah. well. I, I've had a few ideas. Les but, Paul? What's know, in the Les Paul at the moment? I've got some Martin A. Smith's oh, that's right, yeah. PAF style pickups, which are awesome. I don't think I want to change those. But uh, yeah, so Martin's another guy we should definitely get yeah. on because he knows a lot about the pickups. Um, what about the Green PRS? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, actually. That's got the Jazz JB. Oh, well, yeah. Just... Well, I love the Jazz. The JB's, eh. It's a See, bit middle of the road. I so. love the JB in the Charvel. Like, it is, for me, for the rock stuff, it is actually a perfect <clears throat> yep. pickup. Um, yep. and it's like super hot, obviously, and, and all that sort of stuff. And it has that, it has a, a sound to it, but it, I thought about that for the Explorer because there was one available like locally, but I think the customs may be a little bit less, um, well, yeah, it sounds le less like a JB. It just, I don't know. It's maybe a little bit more neutral, but we'll see. Yeah. I might be full of shit with that. It sounds so good yeah. in the other, like, well, in that SE guitar. I, I had that, I had that moment when I put it in where I'm like, this is the sound that I've wanted the whole time um, in a guitar yep. like this. And I'm ho I'm hoping with the jazz, like, man, I don't know why it's taken so long to try it. Like I thought the 59 would be great and it's it. fine. It's just not my sort of job, you know, but it, it might be that I, I put this like a jazz custom in and then I'm just like, great. That can just be this, the thing that I like. Um, yeah. I never, I never split pickups as well i won't do it on this explorer because i don't really think it's that necessary to do but um i've been thinking about that with some guitars too just to try it out i just kind of prefer the, a single coil guitar like i, I don't need it to yeah be, having a man honestly thing. having the split just for the neck humbucker on a prs is it's it's something i use a lot like a lot a lot it's pretty awesome see i reckon i'd do that if i was playing a guitar like that for more gigs like mostly if i'm doing a yeah like if I'm doing a gig, it, I, recently it's my telly, so it's like it's a single single, or it's my Charvel, which is hum single single. So I, I kind of have that position covered. Um, I reckon if I was, yeah, if I was playing like a um, a super strat with two humbuckers, I'd definitely do it. Um, yeah, I, I, it feels weird. Like I know it's not; it's mental, but it feels weird to me to to split like coils on like a Les Paul. Like I'm sure it's fine. Like do it. You should do it. Everyone should do Bro. it. Yeah, exactly. It just feels like uh, strange. It feels like it. it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. So the DGT, the way they split the pickups, they actually use, I believe they use a resistor to do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, rather than a classic coil tap where right. you, oh, again, coil tap, coil split. I know there's people get pedantic about the names, but obviously a humbucker has two single coil pickups mm -hmm. wired in series out of phase. Most of the time you just remove one of those coils, you know, mm -hmm. and you've got like a, that's your tapped or split, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yeah, the DGT, it's got, I'm just trying to remember how they do it. Um, so they insert a resistor in, in there to stop the pick. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see what do they actually do. How to do the PRS DGT resistor type mod. So, one second. I'm just reading up on this. Yeah, because the split sounds in that sound amazing. 
Um, they sound really, really fat, not too like spiky or jangly. Mm. Uh, so you replace the wire from... So you have a switch. You've got resistors. Use a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor on the bridge pickup and 1.1 kilo ohm resistor on the neck pickup. Split coils on a humbucker, you basically short one of the coils to ground. That means on a four wire humbucker, the two wires that are taped together get switched to ground. The DGT mod is called a partial coil split because you put a resistor between those pickup wires and the ground. Okay. There you go. So you're not taking out all of, you're not sending everything to ground. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's a really clever mod, actually. Um, and yeah, it sounds phenomenal. Like the DGT has, in my opinion, like the best split humbucker sounds mm. of any guitar that I've got. Um, and because, yeah, they're not, again, it's going from the full humbucker sound to the kind of wide open split sound. Often the humbucker can sound, you know, you set it up for it to sound good with the split and the humbucker sounds too dark. Yep. Or you set it to sound good with the humbucker and the split's too bright. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's whatever they're problem, doing with the DGT man. sounds great. It's just like, yeah, balance. I think balance is really important. Yeah. Like, you want to go from, like, if you've got a pickup switch, right, you should want to go from like two tones, like, yeah. obviously. But they should be related to each other, not like other ends of the spectrum. Um, yeah, exactly. Like when it's and I, that's a, just an issue. Like I said, with a bridge pickup in a sorry neck pickup in a Les Paul, I know like there's the. Uh, I think Jason Isbell mentioned it. He's like, yeah, set the uh, and you know common knowledge, like set your tone up for the neck pickup, like do yeah. that, and then you'll go to the bridge pickup, and you can you'll have a bit more spike and stuff. Yeah. But I kind of I live on the bridge pickup more, so like I'm always setting the sound for that, and then swapping to the the neck and it just sounds boomy and shit but like i'm hoping with the jazz if it's just like just reducing a bit of that bottom and that woofiness maybe that'll just be the ticket for me from what i like but we'll find out man like i'll, yeah. I'll know tomorrow in, in theory exactly whenever and this. we'll catch up for the next pod and you will see if we're full of shit or not absolutely mate that's uh well i know i'm full of shit it's um you know it, just just a fact aren't of we life, all mate. troy aren't we all Look, mate, I feel like we should wrap it there. All I will say is, and this will annoy you a lot, um, playing Warren's Eric Johnson Strat, mm -hmm. it's such a good Strat, like at the like, I need to get one in my life at some point kind of thing. So I I didn't know they were that good. You, um, are, you are becoming such a guitar nerd again, like guitar. I'm becoming, guitar. The, I'm becoming the Joe Bonamassa of uh, 80s rock cosplay, aren't I? Oh, mate, absolutely. We lost another brother in that regard, as as I told you, I caught up with um, our good friend Mike uh, earlier today. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the OG of us uh, people that are currently in our mid thirties and like long haired, long haired men. But uh, the man, he's cut that hair of his. So just another soldier has fallen. Pour a little out. Yep, pour and, one out for the homies. Um, Look, I think the cutting is. That's that's particularly poignant, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. I, I feel like if you're gonna abandon the long hair, chrome dome. <laughs> you just go want... full Lex Luthor. Yeah, fair enough. You do trim yours? I can't remember. My hair. Yeah. Uh yeah, but not anywhere near often enough. It's due yeah. for a trim. Me too. Um, it's been three years since I've had a trim. Yeah. I do it every. Probably three should four do years. it. Yeah. Yeah. Needs a bit of a trim. Elspeth's a little bit more like on it with her hair and hers is like it's gotten so long and thick and amazing. Mm -hmm. So maybe she's onto something, mate. Maybe I, she's onto something. It's just the thing, man. Like when you grow up as a boy with short hair uh, and everyone else around you, not everyone else, like, you know, girls grow up and they have long hair and they know how to take care of it. Like you just miss yep. it. It's like, you know, uh, like when maybe a little girl that's played with Barbies her whole life gets to 18 and decides that they just want to like listen to Dokken. It's just like, well, you have, or, or, um, or Van Halen or something like that, you know, like you've got a yeah. lot of things you got to catch up on. It's just like nothing assumed there. So yeah. you know, music is for everything, everybody and long hair is for everybody as well. But I would have loved when I started growing my hair long to know that you should brush it. Yeah. Because I was like yep. 19 assumed before I had a rush. This is all it is. Yeah, assumed, assumed knowledge. knowledge. So, yeah, anyway. And it needs to have a trim. So, I'll, I'll trim it soon. I might get um, Jade to do it. There you go. She's done it a few times. She's given me the best haircuts. Last time I got it cut, I got a trim. It looked like shit. So, I've not by her, by someone else. <laughs> so, I was a bit sort of um, a bit scared to, to go back to, to yep. somewhere. Anyway, mate, should we just bloody wrap him up? Are you happy? 
Let's wrap him up, Troy. Everybody listening, thank you for your time. Let us know your thoughts on guitar pickups. Let us know any topics you'd like us to see in the future. And hopefully we'll be coming at you with some more special guests very soon. Peace.